الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be amongst you with another episode of Practical Guidance from the Revelation Discussing the importance of the Holy Quran has been the topic for the past 34 episodes and why do we need to take care of the Quran more pay attention to the verse of Quran more read more and ponder more on the verses of the Holy Quran we get to a beautiful hadith by Rasulullah which is alarming and uh, it discusses what will happen to us uh, on the day of judgment where Rasulullah states, Ana awwalu wafidin ala al aziz al jabbar. I'm the first to come to the day of judgment. Yawm al qiyamah. Wa kitabuhu wa ahlu bayti thumma ummati. So after me, the Holy Quran will come, and then after that, my progeny, ahlu al bayt alayhum as salam. Thumma as alhum, ma fa'altum bi kitab billah wa bi ahlu bayti. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the Holy Prophet first. And then Quran comes second. And then Ahlul Bayt salam come next. And we are there. After Rasulullah, the book of Allah, Quran, and Ahlul Bayt, us, Ummati, the nation of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, we come after. Then Rasulullah will ask us, ثم أسألهم ما فعلتم بكتاب الله وأهل بيتي What did you do with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my progeny Ahlul Bayt alayhum wa salam Because if you remember the importance of Eid al-Ghadir is that amongst the many importance that it has that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and then Rasulullah mentioned that the book of, I'm leaving you two valuable things. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my progeny Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. So he already told us what he's leaving us with. What we need to be looking after. What should be our guidance. And where he says, if you hold on to them both, you will not go astray. So he gave us what we need. On the day of judgment, he will come and he will ask us, what did you do with my Ahlul Bayt and the Quran? Meaning, did you read the Quran? Did you learn lessons from the Quran? Did you bring Quran into your lives? Did you practice the verses of the Holy Quran and the lesson that it had? And also the narrations of Ahlul Bayt How much you were familiar with the narrations of Ahlul Bayt How much did you know of them? For some people, they only know the names of the Imams. For some. From the beginning, for some people, even minorities of the minorities, they only know Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Al Hassan Mushtawa alayhi salam, and then Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, and then that's it. And they might know Imam Al Rada alayhi salam, keeping in mind Mashhad, and then our beloved Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. But all the other Imams, they are even they don't know their names. So, do we know their names? We have to. How much narrations do we know from them? And how many verses of Quran do we know that they have interpreted? And we know the verses of Quran from the perspective of Ahl al-Bayt Because no one knows Quran except Ahl al-Bayt And nobody should interpret Quran but Ahl al-Bayt And we discussed about this in the previous episode. So how many do we know? That becomes us, how many hadith do we know? That brings us to an action plan. Insha'Allah, we get a book by the name of Tuhaf al-Uqul. The PDF is online available. Just Google it, Tuhaf al-Uqul. Insha'Allah, we will have an email address. You can email us. If you can find it, we will email you the book. It has the hadith of starting from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa all the way to our beloved Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. So from each ma'asum, each of the imams, uh, it has good amount of narrations that can be a good start up for us to start reading and acting upon the narrations of Ahl Bayt and the teachings of Quran. We need both of them together. We will keep reminding ourselves that we need Quran and Ahl Bayt both of them together. None of 
we can't divide them. If we divide them, and if you hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not Ahlul Bayt, or vice versa, we will go astray. This is what Rasulullah told us. So, in order for us to have an answer on the Day of Judgment, when Rasulullah asked us, ثُمَّ أَسْأَلُهُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَبِأَهْلِ بَيْتِ When Rasulullah will ask us, what did you do with my progeny and the Quran, we can tell the Rasulullah that Alhamdulillah we were blessed to read Quran, understand Quran throughout these interpretations and these episodes that we're honored to bring you. And we were also reading the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt Keep it next to your uh, prayer mat. In the morning, when you wake up, this is an action plan for all of us, including myself. We leave the Quran and we place the Quran and the book of Tuhaf al-Uqul as a, the book of Ahadith to start up next to our prayer mat. In the morning, after our Salat al-Subh, that we said in a previous episode that inshallah we will be awake from sun, Salat al-Subh until sunrise, that one hour, hour 15 minutes we have uh, based on where we live, we read a page or two. If we can read 50 verses of the Holy Quran and read the translation, that is a sign of a believer. Where Imam Sada has stated, a believer is the one who reads 50 verses of the Holy Quran a day. If we can read 50 verses of the Holy Quran and also read the translation, that's, that is the best. And after that, we take start from the beginning. We take one or two or three hadith. Actually, let's just hold on to one hadith a day. We read one hadith starts with Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We read hadith from Rasulullah. We ponder about those verses that we read. And we also we ponder about the hadith of Rasulullah. How can I implement one verse from those 50 verses? And one hadith from the and this hadith that I have read, how can I implement them today and throughout the next week and the next month and a year? So by the end of year, end of the year, in 2020, inshallah, we will have long life. You have read, understood, pondered, and inshallah have acted upon 365 narrations and th 365 verses of the Holy Quran. We don't have to go big. No, small steps, baby steps. One verse a day we think and ponder, we read 50 verse, and we read the translation, and then we take one verse that we think and ponder, what is this verse is trying to tell me? And inshallah, we start from the beginning, and we are familiar with the interpretation that we are honored to bring you. So when we read Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, when we read Surah Al-Hamd, when we read Surah Al-Baqarah, we will remember the interpretations, we will remember the tafasir, and that verse and that hadith that we have read, 365 narrations, 365 verses of Holy Quran can definitely revolutionize our life and can change our perspective to the life, and we can solve our problems and resolve them using the Quran So this is why we need to go back to the Quran. This is why we need to go back to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt Because Rasulullah will ask us on the Day of Judgment. This is part of our belief. This hadith in, is in the book uh, Kaf al-Sharif, uh, volume 2, <coughs> page 600. Where Rasulullah will ask us, what did you do with Quran? Well, some people will answer, oh Rasulullah, I really respected the Quran. I kept it on the bookshelf and I just took it out of the bookshelf, make sure there was no dust on it, and make sure I didn't have it, uh, didn't have my kids to play with the Quran. And the month of Ramadan came, I make sure I read it chapter, I mean cover to cover. Some people will answer that, and Rasulullah will ask them, "What did you do with my um, with my uh, progeny?" Well, uh, Rasulullah, I only knew Imam Hussein alayhi salam. I attended the Majalis of Abdullah Hussein within the ten days of Ramadan Muharram, and that was it. Well, more is needed from us. All of those sacrifices were for you and I to get these two valuable gems, the Book of Allah and Ahl al-Bayt and act upon them. So why Ahl al-Bayt? Why we need Ahl al-Bayt within this system of interpretation, within this series, within understanding Quran, why do we need it? Because of the hadith from Imam Masada where Imam says, Inna Ahl al-Baytin, لم ينبعث منا إلا من يعلم كتابه من كتابه من أوله إلى آخره. Where Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, each one of us that has been sent as an Imam, as a guidance to people, each and every one of us, one of us, we know the Holy Book of Quran from the beginning to the end. We know it cover to cover. No one else has claimed. All the other Khulafa that came. 
and took the Khilafah of Ahl Bayt and didn't allow them to rule the people and didn't allow them to guide people to Allah and to heaven and to book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no, none of them can claim and we don't have it within our ahadith that they, or history that they said we know the Quran cover to cover none of them except Ahl al-Bayt they have claimed and it's, it is within our books and narrations how beautifully they interpreted the verse of the Holy Quran another hadith where Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Wallah, he swears to God. Very important to keep in mind. Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam, they don't swear easily. For some people, unfortunately, everything that they say, oh, Wallah, 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 within some culture, some, tr some communities. That actually brings us to a good second action plan. We should not use the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for silly things. Wallah, I came one time. Wallah, I'm not lying to you. What? Ahl al-Bayt they only used the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they swore to Allah for a very, very important reason for about the statement that they're about to make. Wallah, inni I la'a'alamu kitab Allah min awwalihi ila akhirah. By God, I know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning to the end. Ka'annahu fi kaffi is as is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in my hand. I know it cover to cover. Every verse of the Holy Quran, I know of it. Fihi khabaru sama wa khabaru al-ard. In it, we have the news of the heavens and the news of the earth. Wa khabara ma kaan wa khabara ma huwa ka'an. Whatever has the news of what happened past and what is upcoming. Qala Allah fihi tabyan kull shay. Where Allah has said, in it, as the affair has been mentioned, the affair of everything. Imam said, fi ka'annahu fi kaffi. It's as is in my hand. One day, Umar al-Khattab asked Amir al-Mu'min, the commander, commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, how is it that every question that we ask you, you know the answer? Right away you answer us. Answer us. Umar is surprised. Why every time that he asks Amir al-Mu'min, the commander of the faithful, he knows the answer. Imam tells him, how many fingers do you have in your hand? He said, five. He said, did you have to think about five? He said, no, I know about it. I know of it. And he, as soon as you ask me, I know five fingers I have in my hand. Imam says, all the questions that you ask, and we can also understand that everything that is in Quran, Imam knows that it's a way that we know our, the amount of fingers that we have in our hands. They know it all. So we are in need of narrations of Ahl al-Bayt to understand the Holy Quran and no one else. If we read an interpretation of scholars which is not based on, based on the words of Ahl al-Bayt we should not listen to it. We should not take it. No, we should go to those interpretations, those scholars who refer back to the ahadith and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt to teach us and educate us what Quran has for us. This hadith was in in Tafsir al-Burhan, volume 1, page 34. Another hadith by the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minya Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, where he says, مَا نَزَلَتْ آيَةٌ إِلَّا وَأَنَا عَلِمْتُ فِي مَنْ أَنْزَلَتْ وَأَيْنَ أَنْزَلَتْ وَعَلَى مَنْ نَزَلَتْ أَنَّ رَبِّي وَحَبَ لِي قَلْبًا عَقُولًا وَلِصَانًا طَلِقًا Imam says, there is no verse that was revealed to the Holy Prophet except I know about what it was revealed, where it was revealed, on whom it was revealed, what was the occasion, why it was revealed, when was, the ta when, when, when was it, where was it, why it was revealed. And Allah has inspired me with an intellect, an heart, and outspoken tongue. We see Ahl Bayt they say we know the Holy Quran better than everyone else. We know it cover to cover, why it was revealed, when it was revealed, how it was revealed. So can we go anywhere else than the door of Ahl Bayt to find and learn Quran? Not at all. Another verse that we have to keep in mind, another hadith, why we are emphasizing on going to the doors of Ahl Bayt knocking on the doors of Ahl Bayt and trying to gain the knowledge of Ahl Bayt, knowledge of Quran from the perspective of Ahl Bayt Where Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, "Anna al-Qur'ana fihi muhkamun wa mutashabihun. Fa amma al-muhkamu fa nu'minu bihi wa na'amalu bihi. 
ونادين الله به وأما المتشابه فنؤمن به ولا نعمل به وهو قول الله فأما الذين في قلوبهم and the rest of the verse. Imam says, verses of the Quran, some of them are definitive, muhkamun, and some of them are metaphorical. In the Quran, fi muhkamun, wa mutashabihun. Some of them are uh, definitive, and some of them are, some of the verses are metaphorical. فَأَمَّا الْمُحْكَمُ فَنُؤْمِنُ بِهِ وَنَعْمَلُ بِهِ The definitives, we believe in them and we act upon them. وَنُدِينُ اللَّهِ بِهِ وَأَمَّا الْمُتَشَابِهُ فَنُؤْمِنُ بِهِ But the metaphorical, we believe in it وَلَا نَعْمَلُ بِهِ And we don't act upon it. وَهَوَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ Those who have in their hearts hate and hypocrisy they will follow these people will follow the metaphorical and they will act upon the metaphorical no one knows but no one knows its interpretation except Allah and those firmly grounded in knowledge and those who are firmly rooted in knowledge, they say, we believe in it, all of it's from our Lord, and none takes admonition except those who possess intellect. How do we know? How do we know which, ver which verses are definitive and which verses are metaphorical? We don't know it. If it's not because of Ahlul Bayt, we will not know which verse we have to act upon and which verse we believe in and we don't act upon. We are again and again and again in need of the interpretations that are based upon the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt So that brings us to action plan again. Remember, Tuhaf al-Uqul, search it, find the book, find the PDF, download it, put it next to Quran, next to your prayer mat every day. We read 50 verse and we read the translation and then we think and ponder about one of those verses and then we take one hadith, we read it, the English translation is there, if not email us, we will inshallah email it to you and we will think and ponder and try to bring one verse of Quran a day and one hadith inshallah a day in our lives and we will see how much we will have better life. We will conclude inshallah by reading Dua al-Faraj, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi, ajallah ta'ala, Faraj al-Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hajjat ibn al-Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadha sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu wa ardaka taw'a. Wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila. Barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen.